Hey guys, Chaps here. You're watching TACOM, and this is Gears Feed. We've got a lot of news to cover this week, so let's hop into it. First up, some armor skins. I forgot to mention this in last week's video, but the voting is concluded for the free armor skins that we're going to be getting. The five skins shown here received the most votes, and they're going to be available as free DLC at a later, unknown date. Next up, a quick follow-up to one of the comments I made in last week's video. In last week's video, I mentioned how terrible the system was where we couldn't buy the Halloween packs with in-game credits. Turns out this was simply a mistake. In the future, we can expect that all special event packs can be buyable via credits. Note that this isn't going to apply to promotional packs, such as the eSports or the Run the Jewels pack. Speaking of the Run the Jewel pack, the airdrop was officially announced on Tuesday. The pack comes in the form of an airdrop. For $20, you're going to get 14 weapon skins, 2 characters, 2 emblems, and 2 bounties. Note that the pack has no RNG aspect. You're guaranteed to get everything in there every time. The fact that the Season Pass holders aren't getting anything from this, and that the packs aren't purchasable via credits, has upset many people. I do think the price is a little steep, and I don't completely agree with the system, but I'll save that for some future discussion. On the topic of the Season Pass owners getting some content, we may have some good news. According to this tweet, it looks like we can expect more in the future. As many Pass owners have been complaining about recently, it really doesn't seem like the Pass is living up to its $50 price tag. It looks like TC is investigating adding more content to the Season Pass to help make up for this. Personally, I'd like to see discounts on promotional packs, maybe some free packs, and maybe even some free weekly or monthly packs. Imagine if every week we got a free Horde or Versus pack, with a chance every month of getting a free Elite pack or an Operations pack. This is just a small thing, but it would be a really nice touch. Next up, let's talk about the update we got on Tuesday. This update came with various fixes that are described in the thread that I'm linked below. It also gave us the maps Checkout and Dry Dock. The maps are currently only available in the developer playlist, but they'll be available in a few days on the normal rotation. So far, people seem pretty happy with the update. It was a nice first step, but there's plenty to still be done. Many of the changes this game needs are on a larger scale, so it's going to take time to implement. Luckily, they seem to be aware of most of these issues, and we can hope to see them all patched in the future. Do you love Carmine? Yeah, I'm sure there's a few of you out there. Anyways, this teaser came out Tuesday night. On Wednesday afternoon, we got another one. Uh, I hurt, Sarge. <laughs> and on Thursday, we got yet another one, this time showing Clayton. Oh, shit! Shit! We're on fire! <laughs> then on Friday, the big news. The Gary Carmine trailer. Essentially, we're getting some packs in-game for credits that are going to give us some really cool stuff, including skins and characters. To learn more about this, check out the link below, or check out this other video that I made talking about it. Late Wednesday night, Pez Radar posted on the forums. As hinted at many times, they're aware of people's concerns with the, well, let's just call it the economy in-game. On Friday, as part of their update with the 10 Years of Gears information, we got some news about these updates. Starting today, we're going to be seeing some of these changes. First up, the credits you receive in versus multiplayer matches has been increased. Not only this, but the amount that you get when losing a match won't lag as far behind when compared to winning a match. This ensures that everyone gets credits at a nice rate, not just those who are winning. Bounties have also been reworked. They're going to be providing higher credit and XP rewards. And the last part of this update was changing the way some of the packs work. In versus booster packs, you're now guaranteed a customization item. The other four cards are going to be bounties, with a chance at one of them also being a customization item. Horde boosters are now guaranteed to give a customization item as well. The other four cards will be skills, just like they used to be, with a chance of one of them being a Horde bounty. Operations packs have now changed to guarantee two customization items every time. Personally, these changes are pretty cool, but I'm not sure how I feel about the Horde pack change. I think it might be better in the long run, but it's a little too soon to tell right now. This was a great first step by the Coalition to rework the economy. As nice as it was though, I still think there's some nice room for improvement. Let's see how this plays out, and hope the trend continues in the future. Remember the rare bodied weapon skin from Ultimate Edition? Well now you can get it in Gears 4. All you need to do is play in two ladder matches in this week's Pro Circuit, and play in the tournament this Sunday. In addition, don't forget to tune into the eSports streams for a chance at some nice swag and some in-game skins. The last thing I wanted to cover were a few easter eggs. We had a few major ones come out since the last time we discussed them in these videos, so I just wanted to give a short update. First up, a couple weeks ago, a Dom and Maria easter egg was discovered. By shooting these graves in the correct order, you'll be rewarded with a nice ghostly Boltok. 
It can one-hit any enemy, including mini-bosses if you hit them in the crit. This pistol is going to prove to be extremely useful for the insane campaign runs. And as always, we'll give credit where credit is due. We didn't find this one. From what we can tell, it was discovered by the Jeffro. I've got his video linked below. Next, have you ever wanted to ride a Reaver? Well, now you can. From what I can tell, this was first discovered by Sparkle. Sorry, I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing that one correctly, but I've got his video linked below. Load up the prologue, shoot the rider off, and just hop onto the Reaver and have some fun. The last one I want to bring up is quite small, but it's also quite funny. On checkout, if you spin a smoke while hitting the alarm buttons, you're going to get insta-downed. This is a funny reference to the Gears 3 glitch that would freeze the game. It's a nice little punishment to anyone who tries to see if the glitch still works in this one. We're not exactly sure who found this one, but I'm grabbing some footage from the Razor Dutch to show you guys. Check out his tutorial in the link below. Sadly, I still haven't done any extensive easter egg hunting myself. Between work and making these videos, there hasn't been too much free time. With the little time I do have, I've pretty much just been putting into enjoying the game, especially Horde mode. Speaking of which, for those who are struggling with Horde, be sure to check out this guide I put together recently, along with our Horde Impressions videos. The guide is intended for the beginner to intermediate range of Horde player. It's a nice guide to get you through 1-50 to on Insane, but it skips some of the more detailed mechanics. And that is going to bring us to the end of the video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, drop it a like, and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and subscribe to keep up to date with our content. To stay up to date with all your Gears news, be sure to follow at Galfeed, where you'll continue to see real-time updates covering anything and everything Gears of War. Once again, this has been an episode of Gears Feed on TACCOM, and until next time, thanks for watching.